Hey folks, today we're diving into something seriously cool, building a satellite ground station. Whether you're into tracking weather satellites, talking to astronauts on the ISS, or just geeking out over space tech, this project has something for you. Throughout the series, we're going to break it down step by step, covering everything from radios, antennas, software, even picking the perfect location for your deployment. In this overview, I'm going to share what you can expect over the course of the series. So let's get started. Welcome to the overview of a brand new video series chronicling the installation of the satellite ground station here at W5ITR. In a series of videos, I'm going to break down key components, including the radio antennas, antenna support structure, plus additional RF gear like LNAs and bandpass filters that optimize your station's performance. You'll see how it all comes together with orchestration, sequencing, and automation, and the satellite software you'll need for your shack. We'll explore site selection and how it influences system choices. And we'll take a look at my solution for bringing coax into the shack. Whether you're a beginner or a seasoned ham, this series has something for you. I'll unpack the big decisions like selecting the right rotator and identifying hidden challenges you might not see coming. I'll break down the costs and share my personal approach to tackling a project like this. Throughout this series, we'll cover everything from the tower build, the RF components, automation setup, and joining the SatNogs network. Plus, we'll look at operation, maintenance, and ultimately do a retrospective on what worked, what didn't, and what I do differently. If you think I'm missing something, leave me a comment and tell me what you'd like to see in this series. Maybe I can fit it in. This is going to be a great ride. So enjoy the front row seat, and I look forward to your feedback as the project moves forward. Now, many of you know I've been working satellites by hand for years. So why am I putting in a ground station? It's a valid question, and it's the type of question you should be asking yourself for any project you consider in your own shack or in any other context. Before diving into any project, it's important to take time to understand your goals and motivations. Doing so helps you with decision making, and it reduces the chance that you won't get all you hoped for out of your time and investment. It's a good practice for any project. And with that, here are my goals for my satellite ground station. Number one, I want to work more satellites. One of my primary goals is to operate satellites more easily year round. I love operating outside. But in the sweltering heat of a Texas summer, running outside to catch a pass can be easily overlooked when it's 100 degrees out. Being able to work satellites from the comfort of my shack will certainly increase the number of passes I work over the course of a year. Number two, exploring another dimension of the satellite niche. To me, a ground station is much more conducive to modes other than voice. I am looking forward to delving deeper into satellite digital modes, CW, and telemetry. Number three, contributing to the SatNogs network. For a while now, I've had a goal of being able to contribute to the SatNogs network. This is a citizen science global initiative revolving around satellite ground station sharing. By making my station remotely available during idle times, I'll be contributing to this collaborative effort. It's rewarding to know that I am part of a larger mission 
assisting others in their pursuit and understanding of space and radio sciences. Number four, making more contacts from my home grid. Currently, most of my contacts occur in grids outside of my home grid. I have optimized my mobile rig for travel. It goes with me to ham fests, camping trips, and whenever I go visit my family. I'm primarily a roving operator. One of the coveted ham radio awards is the AMSAC Gridmaster Award. This award requires collecting confirmed contacts for all 488 grids in the contiguous U.S. from a single grid square. Now, chasing awards has never been my goal in amateur radio, but there are a few awards that I feel really mark one's progress in the hobby. From my perspective, achieving the Gridmaster Award is so much more than a technical achievement. It requires a real connection to the satellite community. You may luck into a rare grid here and there, but to actually make verified contacts in all 488 grids, it requires planning communication, and setting up SCEDs. You must be fully engaged in the community. These grids become more than just numbers. They represent another ham, a relationship, and a challenge overcome in one's journey as an amateur radio operator. I think that's pretty special, and that's why I think it's worth all the time, effort, and expense. All right, folks, I hope this overview has wet your whistle and enticed you to take this journey with me. Keep an eye out for the next video in the series. And until then, 7-3.